Welcome back to the Wrong Advice Podcast. I'm your host, John Picciuto, and I'm very excited to have Mr. Mark Sosimo <laughs> on the line with us today. Mark, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing really well, man. Uh, very, very excited to have you on the podcast today. And uh, shout out to Lynette Blanche for putting us together and making this all happen. Um, can you give a quick introduction to the listeners? Sure. Um, I'm Mark. I am a filmmaker, sometimes a photographer, uh, currently in limbo. Not really sure what I am at the moment, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm master of no particular arts, but fascinated by all of them. Love that. And uh, yeah, I'm just, you know, happy to, happy to be here. Thanks for having me on the podcast. Oh, I'm very excited. So in limbo, director, photographer, creator, whatever you want to call yourself, what's, uh, yeah. what's been going on life-wise that sort of led you to, to the current state of limbo? Uh, I just recently got laid off. Um, it's, uh, it's interesting. You know, it's something that um, I guess I, I was sort of expecting for the, for the past year um, at my, at the company I was working for. And, um, you know, you never sort of, you know, you you think it's going to happen. You, you sort of, you know, a lot of us got that feeling and then it happens and you're like, Oh, wait a minute. I didn't think it was going to happen to me. Yeah. Uh, and so, um, you know, while it was expected, it was also unexpected at the same time. Um, and, uh, didn't have really a game plan in place. And, you know, it's been a couple of weeks now and, uh, still don't really have a game plan plan in place. You know, I thought, you know, I would take some time and, uh, I don't know, teach a goat how to tap dance or something like <laughs> just li live out my wildest dreams. Um, but unfortunately I don't know how to tap dance myself. So that would be the, that would be the first step. Yeah. And, uh, my knees, I have bad knees, so I can't even do that. Me too. must be the Italian <laughs> in us. <laughs> um, so like I, I, I I lost my job in August of 2020 and we're going a few days away from like the two year anniversary of the moment that everything in my life changed. Um, I was working in real estate development. I had a job that I thought I was going to love that I did very bad at. And when I got laid off in the middle of the pandemic, it felt like the entire fucking world fell apart. Um, yeah. On top of the fact that I couldn't really do anything about it. I couldn't go anywhere. Like I just was in this position where my identity was taken away from me and I, I like was just struck with this feeling of like fight or flight. And I actually f fled. <laughs> I went on a cross truck, cross, cross country road trip for about a month. Um, and that's like sort of where I fell in love with photography and, and started the, the creative journey that I'm sort of in now. Um, you've obviously been in the industry a lot longer than me and have a career that's been <laughs> multitudes of years longer than me. Um, is there any part of you that's sort of excited and terrified and a multitude of other sort of emotions and feelings right now? Yeah. I mean, it, it's sort of interesting. I, you know, I've growing up, I always thought, photography would be my thing. And then I got to college, took a photography one-on-one class and realized that I hate it because <laughs> the, the, the photography class, they, you know, it's, it was, you know, let's learn about F stops and ISOs and how to develop film. And I had no interest in the technicalities of that. Sure. Um, so then I took a video one-on-one -on -one class. And it was a lot more fun. It was a lot more loose. It was, you know, here's a camera, take it out and do your thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so then my whole life was just focused on video. And now that that part of my life is in question, I'm sort of wondering what would be, what do I want to do now? Do I want to continue with the video? Do I want to just completely switch it up and do something that I don't even necessarily know if I know how to do or not. Mm -hmm. um, I was just selling all of my worldly possessions on Craigslist and some guy came to pick up a box of shoes and he's like, Hey man, you should work for the city. I work for the city. Um, I'm a garbage collector. I'm like, I could, I could be a garbage collector. Good. Pension. You know, they have great, great pension. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a fantastic uh, career move. Um, so I don't know. I'm sort of like open to anything at the moment. I, I, Honestly, I do feel like I will end up falling back into video. Sure. Um, 
because it is what I love. But I also realized that, you know, over the course of my career, I fell more and more out of love with it from a personal perspective. Cause you know, you're, you're in Adobe premiere all day editing and, and all this. And like, by the time you get home, you just, you don't want to even look at it anymore. Totally. And so I didn't never wanted to work on my own projects. I had a, had a documentary I shot with a friend and it took me like three and a half years to finish it. And it was just a 10 minute short film just cause like I couldn't bring myself to, you know, sort through that footage, go through all that stuff. It was just like exhausting to me. I feel that. Um, so, you know, hopefully, you know, during this time I'm going to be able to, I don't know, like fall in love with it again, you know, work on some personal projects. Um, but you know, I've, I've just been, I've just been relaxing a bit, you know, for the moment and, you know, just trying to figure out what my next steps are. Yeah. I, I found that there was like this, that moment where I took like that necessary breath of like figuring out what I wanted to do was incredibly mm -hmm. crucial to sort of re focusing my mind and my passions into what is now my career. Um, yeah. Big recommendation to do the same. I think if you can like really sit down and sit with your thoughts and like pragmatically think about your life, about like what you want out of, you know, the next five, 10 years of your career and your life, you can then start building the things around that. Right. A lot of times yeah, we do sure. the, we do the easy thing, right? We'll, you'll get an email next week from a recruiter or from a company and be like, Hey, we need X, Y, Z. And you're like, cool. Okay. I'm going to go back to work now. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's real. It's, it's hard for me to wrap my head around, to be honest, because I've never been in this position before. Well, that's nice. My, uh, <laughs> my last job, it was, I, I'd been there for 12 years. Wow. Uh, it was my first real job out of college. You what, know, prior what were to you that, doing? Uh, I was a video producer. Okay. Um, and, uh, I mean, I would dive into that and talk about that a bit more, but I'm legally binded to not say anything bad about the company. That's, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't need um, to go there. <laughs> and to be honest with you, I, I don't really have many good things to say, so I can't say anything. Yeah. Um, you know, it's yeah. I'm I, I'm just. It's interesting. There's sort of there's two ways to look at it. I have a whole bunch of people who are just like, you know, go out and find an, another job like right away. Like, what are you waiting for? And then I have a whole bunch of other people, mostly people who have been laid off before who are all just like, dude, take your time. There's yeah. no rush. You have a severance. You That's have, great. You have some time. Don't have, you know, a lot of time, but I have a couple months. Um, and just, you know, don't, don't just take the first thing that pops up. Don't just fall into something. Absolutely. Um, I think what's nice so, is you're, you're hitting the market in a time where I'm seeing a big shift in the value of creatives because so much of the world is changing from a buying perspective that a lot of companies, media brands, et cetera, are, are like putting very high values on what we do now, which is a fucking nice feeling for a change. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like nice to be wanted, nice to be needed. So that gives you a ton of flexibility in being able to decide what that next step, next iteration looks like. Right. And I, I, honestly, I think it really depends on the industry. Um, like I, I know from my personal experience and the experience of some friends in, in tech companies, when it's time to make cuts, the creative team is always the first to go. Always. Um, and so I think, <laughs> I think that's what I'm going to try to avoid uh, for <laughs> next time. If, if I do continue um, down this path, I, I just, I, I don't think I can work for another tech company. Yeah, no, uh, I, I feel that. Uh, you, just, so yeah. this was your very first job out of college. So to me, yeah. it sounds like you've always sort of had that understanding and, and belief that you wanted to be in the creative industry. Like, what did that stem from? Like, was it at a young age you were into making photos and videos? Is like, when, like, how did that sort of come to be? Jackass. Oh, really? Yeah. It, <laughs> the DIY. It, yeah, yeah that, that's really what it was. You know, uh, I think it was uh, two, 2000, I think. Um, and prior to that, you know, there were, I was sort of into the, uh, this, I don't know if you're familiar with CKY yeah. and big brother, which was what came before Jackass. Mm -hmm. Um, just, you know, a bunch of friends running around with a, with a video camera, making funny skits, getting themselves hurt. Um, year of 2000, I got my first video camera. 
Um, and I was just. And you're, you're how old then? Uh, I was 13. Sweet. That's young. Wait, 2000? I was born in 87. That's 13, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Clearly not a mathematician. <laughs> um, Good thing you know how to use I, a, the video camera, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, and I have to give props to Tom Green. Tom Green was also a big influence on me. I would just, you know, take that video camera around and just annoy my family and, you know, run around with my cousin outside. And uh, that was sort of like the first it was the first time I really sort of just created something entirely on my own. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I always took like art classes and things in school. Um, But, you know, those were all projects I was told to do and accomplish. And, you know, this was sort of the first thing where I was just like, I'm going to come up with an idea and I'm going to execute on that. And, uh, you know, made a bunch of little silly videos that my family found funny. Uh, And then, sort of morphed back into photography a little bit. I, that's when I think it was probably 2000 and hmm, I want to say 2005 probably or 2004, like right at the end of high school for me, mm-hmm. uh, super got into photography, heavily influenced by uh, there was like a big photo blogging scene in like 2003, four five uh, in New York city. Um, guy jake dopkin who is the uh uh editor i think of gothamist Mm -hmm. um and then there was another guy keith kenyan um who is a motion artist who was into photography both of those guys just the way they captured new york city was just it was so beautiful like i you know it's sort of like how you see the city with your own eyes that just like you get a sort of feeling like when you, when you're standing at the bottom of the empire state building, looking up and you're like, Oh my God, that can't really be captured in photos. These guys did that. Um, and that sort of got me into photography a bit for a while. And I sort of held on to that a little bit over the years. Um, just mostly through Instagram, mostly just taking photos with my phone and, uh, yeah, I mean, I sort of poured my life into Instagram for a little while, and then the algorithm kicked my ass, <laughs> and no one was viewing my content anymore, and I just sort of gave up on it. I was posting a, one photo every single day for, I think, two years, Wow! and uh, they had featured my account Wow! Um, in, like, the sign-up flow, like, these are people we think you should follow, twice. Sweet. And so I amassed tens of thousands of followers but as a result of that a lot of those ended up being bots and you know all those sorts of things and eventually the algorithm just sort of shifted against my favor because they were probably like oh these are all bots Mm -hmm. and uh just destroyed my instagram uh and i reached out to them i was like can you just remove all of my followers so it could start from scratch they're like it's impossible to get a hold of anyone yeah to sort of abandon that. And uh, that was honestly, it, it's sad to say, but Instagram is sort of what ended my photography career. <laughs> That's interesting. I feel that you way. Know? I feel that way a lot because like, you know, I'm a photographer. I don't do video. I like, I sh- not that I struggle with it. I just am not inspired by it. So like when I'm asked to do it, it's a chore because it's not something that like is inspirational to me at all. And now right. I find myself having to do fucking reels, right. And make TikToks mm-hmm. so I can amass any semblance of following. I never spent any time trying to gain followers on Instagram or TikTok or Twitter or anything because it was just like, I didn't care. Right. Yeah. But now that it is part of my quote unquote job, I'm being hyper diligent and focused on how I present myself and my work and what mechanism I'm using, i.e. reels versus static posts. Mm -hmm. It's, it's exhausting. You know, it's, it's crazy to have to worry about something as silly as whether I'm going to post a photo from a photo shoot which I got paid to take photos of right. as a video. Like that's crazy. And I, yeah. I, and I understand that feeling where it's like, this is a drag. Like I, I shouldn't have to be worrying about this. And Instagram at times is an exhausting place. All social media is. And it's like yeah. counterproductive to that creative mindset of, I just want to create stuff and hope a lot of people get to see it. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's, 
I mean, I think Gary Vaynerchuk said it best. Like everyone has to essentially be a marketing agency mm-hmm. and you, you have to do everything for, just for yourself, just to get your content out there. So photos, videos, blog posts, you know, and it all sort of funnels back into, you know, the content you want to be working on. Yeah. And it is, it is exhausting. That's, it's unfortunate. That's the world we live in, but it's also, it's a gift and a curse. I agree. Cause you know, prior to, I don't know, six, seven, eight years ago, you, you know, if you were a photographer, you know, good luck getting anyone to see your work outside of, you know, your immediate area. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, having all these platforms to just sort of, you know, get you work and, you know, get your stuff seen, it's, it's great but it's just it adds a whole bunch of extra work that you really don't want to do yeah it's social currency at the end of the day like i've i don't i don't want to say that i've necessarily ever been excluded from an opportunity due to not having you know a hundred thousand followers or whatever but i would imagine like the rate in which i'm responded back to via like reaching out to agencies or whoever i'm trying to work with would be higher if i was like hey here's my instagram account that's going to get you additional traffic because i have followers and that's sad, yeah, sure. but I'm sure it, it would help. Um, I think it's cool that you've like had this sort of creative career built in for yourself from like such a young age to like now. Um, while you have this breath, like, do you look at like personal projects that you would like to create? Do you look at like other documentaries you may want to produce? Do you like you have sort of this runway of you know a couple months of time to sort of build out whatever you want out of your current life? And what is that process like for you in terms of trying to figure out like your, your path forward? Yeah. I mean, I'm sort of an empty box at the moment. Um, I've, I haven't really, you know, while I was working full time and honestly, I just, I want to rewind to the, to the start of the pandemic. Everyone, not everyone, a lot of people use that time to essentially be like, pseudo laid off Mm -hmm. where you know everyone was at home everyone found themselves with some extra time and a lot of people poured that extra time into you know personal projects starting these little side hustles or even just bettering themselves like mentally and physically and i felt like i just completely wasted every moment of of that pandemic of of being forced to stay home because i didn't do anything i just continued working didn't use that time to really work on anything extra. Is there and so, any reason why? Um, I guess I, I just, I didn't know. I didn't, I guess the uncertainty, I didn't know how long it would last for. I didn't know when we would be called back into the office and I didn't want to be in a position where I started something and couldn't finish it. Right. Um, and pure laziness, to be honest with you. Sure. Um, it was just, it was nice to just be at home, being able to work from my couch. And I was just sort of enjoying that. And so now after being laid off, I was like, I don't want to fall into that same position again, where I haven't not, I haven't been taking advantage of that time. And all I've managed to do so far, like I've, I've, you know, done, things that I've wanted to get done around my apartment, essentially. Mm -hmm. Um, It's like, you know, cleaning up, doing some reorganizing, cleaning out my closet, selling some stuff that I've been meaning to sell. Um, And then just also working on like getting back in contact with my friends and and people who I haven't spoken to in, in forever, just trying to reconnect. So I've been having like, you know, I have a lot of friends who are just like all over the country now. So just like having a lot of Zoom meetings with those friends and reconnecting, and that's been great. Um, and then in terms of like creative projects, there's nothing, there's nothing that I haven't done that I still want to do. Like everything that I've had an idea for, I've already accomplished that in some sort of way. Mm-hmm. Um I would, you know, I'd love to work on like another, you know, short film. Uh, I make a lot of short documentaries. Um, but I know from past experience that those, those don't really do anything for me. No one, no one really cares. Um, do you care though? Uh, 
I just did them for fun. Um, mostly just to tell stories or, or to, to share stories of people who I think deserve to have their story story shared. Yes. Yeah. I like that. Um, yeah. I mean, I, you know, there's so many people you meet in New York um, that, you know, someone in, I don't know, Alabama or something like they see, you know, I made a short film of this, this old guy um, who lived in the East village who had an apartment that looked like a, an antique shop wow. that I stumbled in thinking it was an antique shop. And, you know, there, there are people all, all over this world who have never seen anything like this before. Mm-hmm. And it's just, I love being able to share just this little slice of where I live um, and share the story of this amazing dude who lives in this crazy, crazy home. Um, and, you know, that one, that was by far the most popular thing I ever did. I did it with um, my girlfriend at the time. Um, you know, we had just stumbled into his house and it was just like, let's, you know, it was, it was sort of an instant, instant um, inspiration. inspiration. Like we weren't planning on making a film that month. Yeah. Uh, and we had never worked together before at that time. So we're like, you know, we can't, we can't just ignore that this happened. Um, and I think that sort of, that's when I make a short film, that's what I, I sort of need. That's what I, you know, I have to have that inspiration. I need to stumble on that person whose story needs to be told. Um, and I don't like actively really seek that out. Um, yeah, I mean, just cause, and again, cause it's like, you know, they'll get a couple hundred thousand or a million views or whatever. But beyond that, like, I'm not interested in the fi- the film festival circuit that does nothing for me. Sure. Um, I'm not interested in being a film director. Um, it's just something that I do for fun for myself and honestly, just to, for this person to, yeah. to get their story out there. A couple things that you said that struck me. Um, that first part of like what you spent like the last week or two, sort of like the declutter. I think yeah. like that process is massively overlooked by people when they have sort of like a big life alteration because that decluttering, whether when it, e- even though it takes place in a physical sense, it is also a huge mental hurdle that you're leaping over as well. I For can't sure. tell you how I went through the same process. I was like, well, I've got a nice severance, but that's going to run out. And then I have zero income and I'm in a pandemic, so I'm not getting another job. Yeah. And I made the decision to like, I was selling sneakers and like I was sell- I was just getting rid of shit. And I was like, holy shit. Like that was such like a freeing feeling to like mm-hmm. get rid of stuff. It's amazing how much like I spent my- the entirety of my 20s collecting shit that I didn't need. <laughs> yeah. Watches, hats, shoes, like all this shit that I don't need. Right. And mm-hmm. as you start letting this go, like I felt lighter and I felt more like in a position to be able to create stuff. Right. So that decluttering is a huge step. Um, I also like the sort of the, the, the frame in which you put the, the documentaries, like, I don't give a shit about the, the, the circles of, of like film festivals and stuff. That's very altruistic in my opinion, because if you're not looking for exterior validation and you're just doing it on your own, it means you're creating from a pure place. And I think it, if you look at that sort of notion, there's no shot that you can't be successful in whatever you want to create because you're not doing it for someone else other than you or the subject matter that you want to tell. Um, so I think you should definitely lean into that because it sounds like you've, you've got a passion for telling stories of people, whatever that looking feels like, whether it's setting up an Instagram account, a TikTok account, doing, you know, four minute documentaries on YouTube, so whatever the fuck it looks like. I don't know. I don't do video, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, you know, when you, when people, when I talk to people all the time and they're like, yeah, I want to be rich and famous and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, that doesn't interest me. That's not cool. Like, I want to have enough money to pay my bills. And I don't need exterior validation. I'm very comfortable in my own skin. I'm happy living the life that I have. And that's not normal. I know, I think that's a very rare feeling. But you just reiterated the same thing. Well, it's actually, it's interesting. I, I, do, I do want to be rich. <laughs> I do want that validation. I just don't want it from that. Um, that's just, it's something that I, I mean, like you said, I want to keep that pure. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to always create from a pure place and it doesn't interest me to get fame and recognition and money from, from that area of my life. 
if I had, you know, a separate career doing who knows what, um, I would be more than happy to have all of, all of those things. Sure. Um, it's just the filmmaking specifically. It's just, it's, it's, um, I don't, it's, it's too special of a thing and I kind of don't want to, don't want to taint it with, I, I mean, I sort of kind of did that with, with photography a little bit. Like I was chasing the likes. Oh yeah. Um, and then, I mean, I, it's, I mean, it's very clear that the path that that took, as soon as those likes dried up, I stopped posting because I was no longer interested. Yeah. Um, it's the double edged yeah. sword that is, <laughs> you know, yeah. in an instant gratification world, which is, I think oftentimes why I struggle with just like being content and happy in the moment in any moment, because it's Mm -hmm. that it's not the same dopamine that we get when we're constantly scrolling, constantly getting likes and stuff. The, the algorithms have fucked up our receptors in our brain to understand like what normal happiness is like. I envy people who don't have to spend an exorbitant amount of time on social media because God, I'm so jealous of you. (laughs) Um, (laughs) yeah. I mean, I, I have a I have a separate Instagram account uh, called Beverage Champion, in which every single day I drink a new beverage, um, and I rate and I review it, mm-hmm. and that currently is my sort of outlet for getting validation from internet strangers. What, um, what's your favorite drink to date? Uh, there's a soda called Moxie, mm-hmm. uh, which is the I believe it's the official beverage of Maine. Okay. <laughs> um, it can really only be found in the extreme Northeast, uh, Maine, Massachusetts, Vermont, uh, New Hampshire. And it's also bottled in like rural Pennsylvania. So you can find it in some areas of Pennsylvania. Um, it's a really, think of uh, a root beer that's just really bitter. Mm-hmm. It's a, either you love it or you hate it thing. Most people hate it. <laughs> um, but uh I just, I love it. I could drink that every day. I gave, I think I give that a 9.8. Wow. That's yeah. crazy. Especially yeah. for it to be such like a polarizing sort of. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm really into like root beers and, and I love root beer. Yeah. It's just, it, it's a, it definitely lives in that world. And it's just this, it's just a really strong flavor. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just so crisp and refreshing to me. It's just, it's, sucks it's so hard to find actually the one place you can find it which is all around the country are is in cracker barrel oh nice but it's sold in glass bottles and it's actually it's a little bit flatter than if you were to get it in a can Mm -hmm. i much prefer the can so i sometimes we have to go up to massachusetts to uh stock up on cans that's cool though but like something like that that like piques your interest and 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 is like inspirational and just like something you get to do for fun that has no constraints or press pressure to be anything is great um i i'm i'm searching for that right now i've sort of turned it into like it being reading like i want to just start reading more so Uh i've been really super hyper focused on reading like 40 pages a day of whatever book i'm reading and you know since i started doing that i've read four or five books and it feels good i'm not like sharing that with anyone i'm not getting any external validation from it which makes it i guess lacking in that one i mean i guess i'm doing it now i'm telling everyone who's listening to this <laughs> podcast but that was highly unintended um you mentioned that you're spending some of your free time sort of reaching out to friends across the country and uh you know reacquainting yourself with people who you may have like sort of lost touch over the last two years i uh, yeah. i feel that a lot i think as you get older and i'm, I'm two years older than you you realize how really the only thing that's of any real importance in life is people, right? Like Mm -hmm. places change, money changes, like hobbies come and go, but like the people in your life are what makes sort of a life worth living. Um, Like it's who you surround yourself with. And I've, I've been in a position where like the last couple of years I've found myself like cultivating really, really strong relationships with people who I didn't know for 25 years. And I find that like a very sort of exciting thing to be, you know, in your mid thirties and able to, to like, find new friends and like develop new relationships. Um, how has that process been for you so far? Like in, in terms of trying to reconnect and, you know, I don't know, like I'm 36 and single. My life doesn't really tie in that well with the people that I grew up with. They're all married and children, the whole nine yards. But how, how right. has sort of that process been since, you know, layoff? I mean, it's interesting because I mean, 
like you said, m- most of my friends are married um, or have children or both. Um, I'm recently married and it's, it's harder, honestly, to, to connect, you know, I, back in the day, I would just hop a flight and fly out to, you know, wherever I had a friend go out there for a couple of days, fly back, uh, or vice versa. And you can't really do that anymore. Um, and, uh, so it, it has been harder to connect. Like it's still, it has to be like sort of virtual, um, but it, it's it's really it's interesting to see you know the the sort of the the paths that that people's lives take and um, I try and take some some inspiration from them and especially you know my friends who have children who like you know that's still a very foreign concept to me and <laughs> something I, I something I struggle with because it's like you know how I just I don't know how I could balance a, a career and my hobbies, passion projects, and having a child. Yeah. Um, and everyone somehow manages to do it uh, in my or mind. Le- or I at guess. least their Instagram shows that they are. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But, you know, in, in talking with some of them, like, they are all able to sort of pull it off. They obviously have to make some sacrifices. Mm-hmm. Um, but they can still, you know, still juggle all of that stuff. And that's definitely helped ease me a little bit and and thinking like i don't know how you know i could take that step and still live the life that i want it's possible to an extent you know like i said you have to make some sacrifices but um uh it's definitely it's been great talking to to a lot of my friends about that um i would love to you know see them all in person (laughs) honestly like i always thought like oh you know because it has been you, you know, you make New York is sort of a, a revolving door for mm-hmm. people. Totally. Uh, so especially if you're not from New York, you all, almost all my friends have ended up going back to where they grew up um, or to just a, another place with a cheaper cost of living. So almost every friend I've made over like the past 10 years no longer live here. Yeah. Um, and so. I always thought like, oh, I'd be able to get them all together again. Like if I ever got married, I'd have, you know, a big wedding. But then I got married during COVID and we sort of made that decision to just have a small wedding. It was just me, her and our, our, our witnesses um, just closed down to everyone. And then we didn't even have a reception or anything. We had a small dinner with family. Uh, So I didn't, I never got to have like, you know, a reunion of, of all my friends, but, um, I don't know, maybe, maybe one day, if I ever do become rich and famous, I'll, you know, throw a big ball, <laughs> make people dress all fancy, except for me. I'll just wear sweats. I don't even own a suit. You should do that for like your 35th birthday, right? Yeah. Well, that's, Oh wait, my thirty. I am thirty-five. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I, yeah. I, I made Especially. I made the guess that there were, you were you know a late in the year birthday. So I was like, oh, you got a couple months to throw a big ball together. But yeah, that was <laughs> swinging. If I, make it to, if I make it to fifty, I'll do it for my fiftieth. Fifty. Oh man, I really hope the world lasts that long. That'd be great. I uh, I would love to see that for us. <laughs> I mean, I really highly doubt it. I, I mean, I don't I don't know how many people my bunker will hold. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Your bunker in Manhattan, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. New York City but, bunkers are uh, there. There are there are plenty. There are there are definitely yeah. a few. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we'll see. Everyone's going to look different from all the nuclear radiation, though. So <laughs> I don't even know if I'll recognize them. <laughs> That's funny, man. That took a turn. Um, <laughs> I think it's cool that like from a, a young age you're able to sort of like find this career path that you have like envisioned for yourself. And then I also think it's cool that you're in this position now where you get to reconstitute and reframe what that looks like. Um, cause I sort of stumbled into this career very late in life. You know, I was 34 when I lost my job and trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And I think it's like the biggest blessing ever. And like, I keep uncovering new things about it, about the industry, about the people I get to work with that just like further fulfills me, um, from like a, just like a life perspective. Um, this podcast is, is another one of those things that like, I could never have imagined five years ago doing a podcast. Like I barely listened to podcasts five years ago, but mm-hmm. I just think it's like super funny how things in life sort of unfold when they're supposed to fall into place when they're supposed to. 
And I'm a big believer of everything happening for a reason. And, you know, all of the shit that I've dealt with over the last two to five years, whatever it might have been, have led me to this point having this conversation with you. And I feel lucky for that. Um, when you're sitting in the midst of like, we'll, we'll call it loss, right? You lose a, a, a job, you lose sort of a, a sense of identity, right? You were in this position for a decade plus. That that becomes a big part of who Mark is, Um when you like look at what you can do now with the rest of your time in your career and working life, do you have like big dreams, big goals, things that you look at and say, I want to accomplish this in a couple of years or next month or, you know, five years from now, 10 years from now, do you have that sort of, you know, timeline in place for yourself? Um, I think I have a lot of personal goals, um, things I want to accomplish in my personal life with, you know, my wife and my family um i you know we're we're sort of in the process of trying to buy a home um and so that's i think going you know to be the next big step and then you know maybe a child after that um but i it's interesting because i'm most of my life i always really just think in terms of my personal life and my personal goals and i I'd never really thought about, I'm not career oriented. Um, family is the most important thing to me. Yeah. And it's, you know, honestly, that, that sort of, it has set me back a few times uh, in terms of career. Cause you know, I, I had actively uh, denied promotions um, to be able to, like, at, there was a time where I was, um, I was in a long distance relationship and I would leave New York for two weeks or so, or one, one or two weeks every month. And they were just like, we can promote you, but you need to stop doing that. I'm like, no, I'm not going to stop. <laughs> I, I don't need a promotion. I'm good. Um, and so, yeah, I was, I've never been career, uh, career oriented. And so it's honestly, that's not even currently on the, the forefront of my mind. Um, I kind of love that, by the way. I mean, it goes back to what I was saying. Like at the end of the day, the most important thing in life is people. It's not yeah. dollar figures or anything. It's people. For sure. And like, but I mean, like I've said on the flip side of that, I do, I want a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> you kind of, I mean, I live in New York. I need a lot of money. Yes. Um, and so, uh, I mean, you know, there, there's, I would love to turn some sort of passion, not, filmmaking but something else I, to sort of dig up maybe a passion i have deep down inside and try and monetize that um that's awesome i mean i used to i used to have a podcast um bring it back but, uh, i don't podcasts get me in trouble <laughs> <laughs> i was sort of i was i was honestly i was hesitant to even to do this i i've honest i've said no to to being on a bunch of people's podcasts in the past just because i Sometimes I say things I shouldn't say. It's, it's sort, a good it's thing like, we have an edit button. <laughs> yeah. It's like being, I don't, you ever like you're in an Uber and your driver is just saying the wildest shit and you're yes. just blindly agreeing to it. Like, <laughs> oh, I, I think the Irish did 9 11. Like, oh, you know what? I think I heard about that. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like that. Um, so, uh, yeah, I don't think podcasts are really the format that I should live in. I'll, I'll just end up in a lot of trouble. Um, well, it but, depends what the work part of your life looks like, right? Because like at the end of the day, like I'm my own boss, right? So yeah. if anyone is to fuck anyone, it's me fucking myself. So if I say right. something like the Irish did 9-11 <laughs> and I can't get work, I've got no one to blame but myself. So like if you right. end up going the full freelance method where you are your own boss and you are producing your own work and eating what you kill, so to speak... You can pretty much start a podcast and say whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> That's true. I mean, Joe Rogan does that pretty well. Yeah, uh, to the tune of hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then on the you know, and then you have Alex Jones who is getting in trouble for things he said. So rightfully you know, so. And I've, maybe you know, maybe if you shy away from <laughs> <laughs> any sort of conservative talk that has to do with children not actually being killed, you, you can create a nice safe space for yourself from a podcast yeah, perspective. <laughs> I, I think so. And I, I'm, I'm definitely, I'm not, uh, 
I think the craziest thing about the entirety of that story that bugged me the most is that he actually has $45 million to pay the families. Like, I did not know he was so fucking wealthy. And to me, that drives me crazy. People like that should not have hundreds of millions of dollars. That's fucked up. A hundred percent. And, you know, honestly, it's it's sort of the same thing can go for, you know, like, uh, what's his, uh, Joel Austin or oh, whatever. Even worse. The guy with the mega church. Yeah. He, uh, you know, he just had a big uh, thing at Yankee Stadium, I think, this past weekend. God. Obviously filled it. Um, and it's just like, the, people will, I don't know. It, people want to believe in something. And it, the unfortunate reality is that something can be something ostensibly not bad, like God. Although yeah. the way Joel does it is bad because it is a very much a for-profit situation. A hundred percent. And or they want to believe in crazy things like Pizzagate. Like I think it, we're in a very peculiar time in human history where people are wanting more out of everything of their life because we've got these supercomputers in our pocket that show us that everyone else is doing amazing shit. Meanwhile, I'm sitting in rural Alabama you know, working at a gas station. Like it's understandable to want to believe in something outrageous and outlandish and crazy because it makes it feel like we have some sort of significance in our life. And if there was more of an opportunity for people to be taught healthy ways to live a life, like mentally, not just physically, but like mentally, like being able to build out a framework that works for them cognitively, I don't think we would have these grifters who are able to make unimaginable wealth doing shitty things. I think that ship has sailed in America. (laughs) There's no, I mean, after, I mean, we elected Donald Trump as the president of the United States. You can't, you can't, there's no uncorking the genie. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. Yeah. Um, I, I, I have, I've harbored on a multitude of times that we are, you know, sitting by watching Rome burn. We just don't realize that like the fall of America is transpiring in our lifetime, which I hope is an unfortunate reality. But to me at this point, we kind of need like aliens or something to like pull back the veil of the fucking the world because everything's crazy. It's just every single day it's crazy and it gets crazier. So if you're just Joe Schmo trying to go to work and live a happy life, it's impossible because you're bombarded with crazy shit on a minute by minute basis. I wonder what would happen though if if aliens did unveil themselves. Like two things would happen: half the people would be like, "Oh fuck, world war for real," and the other people would be like, "Aliens aren't real. That's not really an alien. That's some CGI <laughs> thing, right?" I mean, you already know that's what would happen. It's like, yeah. did you see what was the movie on Netflix that what's his name did? Um, Don't look up. Oh yes, yeah. That is That's real life. That is real life. It is unfortunate reality. And it's crazy that we live in a time period where you don't know what is actually true or not, depending on where it comes from. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, well, you read it on this news outlet and it's like that left skew. And then if you read it on this news outlet, it's that right skew. And it's like, where's the truth? It's very hard. It's very hard. Yeah. Doesn't make living any easier for sure. <laughs> no, not at all. And I mean, honestly, uh, aliens, that's, I think it would be for me. It would be a a, a uh, it, it would be like reassuring to know that like we're not alone. There's people watching us, and they they don't want us to fuck this shit up. <laughs> um, like I don't know if you, there is the the amount of UFO sightings after World War Two dramatically increased interesting um they the theory is that they were they saw like what we did to japan oh, they're oh, like, fuck. Uh-uh. Yeah. no 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 no. you're not doing that you know it's funny and, you you mentioned something that i think is important like that reassuring notion of like something greater out there besides ourself um I, I wouldn't, I'm not very religious. I'm, I'm extremely spiritual. I, I typically at the end of every podcast ask someone if they believe in an afterlife. Um, mm-hmm. And for me, there's like no question, right? Like the sheer improbability of my birth, right? Like billions to one, just the fact that I am in existence proves to me that there is zero doubt that there is anything else. 
there's no, it just can't be an accident. And like, maybe that's my happy go lucky positive, you know, putting a skew on an accidental sort of outcome, but that's the way I choose to live. I mean, it's inherently optimistic, but just there's the sheer improbability that the earth exists, that we are created in this Goldilocks scenario of this distance to the sun and like all these things transpired. To me, there has to be some quote unquote divine intervention for something that to happen, whether it's Jesus Christ on a cloud or, you know, some alien who did some crazy shit. I don't know. I'm not going to pretend to know, but to me, there is an, an inherent cosmic significance to me being alive. And that's what I try to do with my life. Like, that's why I try to maintain positive relationships with people. That's why I try to chase the things that I'm crazy about and in love with, because that's what you're supposed to do with the time that you have here. I don't want to be 80 sitting on my deathbed and being like, fuck, I didn't do anything. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, I've, I grew up Roman Catholic Same, and obviously, um, we both ended as, low. <laughs> <laughs> as you know, as with most people who grew up Roman Catholic, I am no longer Roman Catholic. Fair. Um, I would consider myself, I guess an atheist, but I, I want to, I wish that I, that I wasn't, I wish I was more. You're an agnostic. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I believe I, it when I, I see it. Yeah. That's very true. Um, and you know, I've, I've heard, uh, there's this comedian, Neil Brennan, um, who, who told this story about his ayahuasca experiences, um, over COVID. And he was by all accounts, an atheist. And, after i think he did ayahuasca like 15 or 20 times Jesus. Uh, or, or, or over the course of i, I want to say like 8 to 12 months oh my god um and he no longer is Interesting. he he claims to he with without without any doubt in his mind he saw god he saw life being created like the 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 center of where all life is created mm-hmm. and he has no doubt in his mind that that's what he saw. Wow. And he became not super religious, but he became religious. He became more spiritual after these experiences. I love that. I, I've never had an experience like that. I'm, too, I'm I, too afraid to do it, honestly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, there are, I mean, he, he had a, a bit of a, a horror story, not with ayahuasca, but with, with DMT where like he'll, he'll have something old, snap in his brain and he'll go right back into that trip for a couple hours. Yeah. That terrifies me. Terrifying. Um, so I don't, I don't think, I don't think I can do it. Maybe mushrooms, but, um, I just, I, I wish I could have some sort of experience like that where like, you know, it could just be the drugs. It could be a hallucination, but it would be nice to just sort of have this, constant reassuring feeling like oh there's something controlling this right um and like i mean to go back to to what you were saying before i i do kind of believe in an afterlife i i think that energy can't be destroyed right so Mm -hmm. when you die that has to go somewhere yeah what happens to it i don't know um i i think in my mind i sort of believe the concept of it being transferred to some other sort of living creature living object uh whatever you know it may be a plant even um like a horcrux <laughs> sorry yeah <laughs> <laughs> fucking love harry potter sorry <laughs> um minus the and, murder <laughs> <laughs> uh so you know i mean who who's really to say like, you know, I, I sort of had, uh, my, my father died in 2016, 17, 2016, I think. Um, and you know, there have just, there have been a lot of, uh, I would call them signs that he is, is present at certain places and times in my life. And, you know, if you would have told me that that would be something that I believed in prior to his death, I would have told you you're fucking crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, but to experience it firsthand, it feels very real to me. 
And my mother has those same experiences on, on her end as well. And like, you know, maybe it's just like the way your, your mind is working to sort of to, to cope with that loss. That's possible. Or it's possible that he is, you know, hanging around. Um, I mean, no I th- one, no one knows. I think what you said is super important because like the, the manner in which you like put a lens on, you know, camera pun, put a lens on your life is dictated by you. Right. So like when you're saying something like, I wish I could have that experience, whether it be drug induced or not to like, give me that frame of mindset where I can have that feeling. I relate to that a lot. Cause I have that feeling and I haven't done the drugs cause I'm just too scared, but yeah. I've, I've started living with the intent on there is purpose with every single day that I have. And I've made such a remarkable improvement in my life. And in just 12 months, like literally, of being able to build a life for myself because I believe everything that I'm doing has purpose and there is intent behind it. And I I know that there is a path laid out before me of all the success I could ever hope for and dream for. I just have to like get it, right? It's there. It's out in front of me. The opportunities and options are are endless and I can get that. It's just up to me to go out and get it. So like I need to not be lazy. I need to not be, you know, very safe. And I need to make risks and take chances because I'd rather fail trying really hard to do something and that I'm like really extremely passionate about than never having tried at all. Right. That's how I started a podcast. That's how I've made a photography career. And it has nothing to do with like whether I believe in God or whether I believe in an afterlife, it has everything to do with, I believe in myself and what I can accomplish if I try really hard. And it's like, you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take whatever that other cheesy thing is about shoot for the moon, land in the stars, all that dumb shit. It's yeah. all together, right? Like I think it all really boils down to like building out a framework for yourself that works. Like I meditate twice a day, 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes at night. If you told me three and a half years ago that I would meditate I would have laughed in your face, but it's made a huge, huge improvement on my productivity because I'm able to like do a palate cleanse for my brain. I have crazy ADHD, if you haven't noticed, and my mind goes in a million directions a million times a day, but like for 10 minutes in the morning and 10 minutes before I go to bed, I'm able to clear that all that out. And that's right. all to say that I think like you can have an intentful life that doesn't have to be ascribed to a religion. It doesn't have to be ascribed to a belief in an afterlife. It can very much be, I'll believe it when I see it. Right. Cause I'm sort of the same way. I just know that it's almost impossible that there's not something else out there. Um, and that's just like a long winded way to say that. I think you can do those things without necessarily having to take DMT and risk being on a permanent <laughs> life trip. <laughs> I mean, I struggle with that. Just knowing, knowing, you know, seeing those images from that new telescope, which by the way, I always knew that Hubble telescope was a piece of shit. It's a fucking happy meal toy. <laughs> Fuck that. This new telescope is awesome. It's life changing. Um, yeah. I, I, I wrote about it recently. Oh, did you? Yeah. It's, it, it's, it's so, I mean, we always sort of knew how, you know, large this universe is, but but seeing a clear photo of that, just knowing how insignificant we all are, it it sort of it makes me feel like, well, what what are we doing? Like, why are we even doing this? So I want to I want to flip that on its head because I I that's a pessimism pessimism's pessimistic person's way of looking at the universe, right? That's an inherently negative thought. Because when I see these photos and I look at the vast expanse of space, yeah, we are simple and small and stupid and don't matter. And at the same time, that simple, small, stupid version of ourselves is cosmically so incredibly significant because we took these photos, we live these lives, we dream these dreams, right? It's like the way you look at that is the way that you can then now build a life for yourself. Like I agree you can make it seem like everything's super small and insignificant and not important, but at the same time, it's the exact opposite of all of those things. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm a pessimist. Yeah, well, no, I'm, I know. I'm, I'm a, I'm a realist. Yeah. I, I like masquerading everyone, as, as a, as a every, pessimist. Every, yeah. Everyone else calls it pessimism. <laughs> I call it realism. I'm a realist um, too. I really am. Uh, tr- truth be told, like, 
I, I am an extremely pragmatic human being. I am to my core a realist, but I've just started like really manifesting the life I wanted for myself. And it's happening like right now, like the opportunities that I have over the next 30, 40, 50 days are going to be incredibly life changing for me. But I started that two years ago, right? right? So here we are two years later and I've built what I'm now experiencing. And now I'm even more optimistic. Like I'm realistic. Like I'm, you know, 50% of the opportunities are going to say no and half of those are going to fail. And then, you know, what's left is going to be the things that I was dreaming about two years ago. So I get right. it. Yeah, I mean, you you put in the work and you're seeing the results, mm -hmm. you know, and and that's that's sort of how I'm sort of trying. I've been trying to live my life, you know, like I, despite feeling insignificant and like nothing, I I understand that you know I have, uh, well, optimistically, seventy years on this world fingers crossed realistically i want to say 60 yeah. <laughs> same because uh, <laughs> i eat a lot i eat a lot of sugar yeah um and carbs yeah uh and you know i i want to do whatever it takes to make those 60 70 years as painless as possible yeah um i honestly don't think i'm contributing to anything I am on a small scale, right? Like the films I make, people watch it, makes people happy, makes people think, whatever. Um, but I don't matter. Those people don't matter. And so it's like, all right, you know, we're playing this little game. It's sort of like the, you know, like the Sims, you know, you, like... you move them in front of the TV, they can watch TV. <laughs> it doesn't matter that that's what they're doing. It just helps them, you know, with their little happiness scale so that they don't die. Isn't that slightly contradictory? I mean, it is, right? You can't say what you're doing doesn't matter and the stories are important, but they don't matter because the people don't matter, but they're important because you get to tell their story. It's a contradiction. It depends on the scale you're looking at, I think. No, I don't think so. Like, dude, when I, like, when I, when I think about like a photo that I post or uh, a reel that I make or whatever, and I'm, it's something that I spend time creating, whether it gets right. five likes or views or whatever like it, it's important to me so i would hope that it's important to other people but if it's not it's still important to me so like the contradiction being that if you're creating something that's important to you and important to the person that you're creating it with whether it finds a home with millions of people or hundreds of people it shouldn't really matter i guess that makes sense yeah i i, I can i understand your I'm, way of I'm, thinking i'm getting too optimistic for my own good i think <laughs> No, I mean that's good. That's that's definitely like a, a good way a good way to, to think about it. Um I should probably adopt that same strategy. Uh <laughs> I, but, I, I'd I be mean, happy to rub off on you a bit. Like cause I just think about like I was literally in your seat two years ago yeah. and I had no no idea what the fuck to do with my life. Literally none. I'd never even at that point had the conceit that I'd be a photographer, that I would start a podcast, that I would do any of these things. So I'm mm -hmm. very very easily able to put myself in your shoes. It's such an exciting thing for me to see for you because like, dude, I've looked at your reel. I've looked at your work. You're fucking talented as shit. You literally could do whatever the fuck you want. So it's just a matter yeah. of like figuring out what you want to do and then doing it. Well, I appreciate the kind words. Um, yeah. I mean, th that's, that's my intent. I, I do, you know, I just, I want to, I'm going to try and live out my, my wildest dreams. It's great. Um, ones that I guess don't involve a goat tap dancing. Um, <laughs> never say never. I mean, look, never say never, right? I can get some knee replacements. We can see what we could do. Um, and then when the aliens come, they're going to be like, what the fuck? I'm going to keep this guy around. He's got goats tap dancing. <laughs> yeah. We don't have that over on Planet X. Like, God damn, all right. Let's bring this guy with us. And then you start a whole new life. No. Yeah. I mean, you're you're on the cusp of like whatever you want your life to be, to be coming. That's like incredibly scary and amazing at the same time. Like you have a skill set that I didn't have prior to that point, right? So right. you have like a baked in talent that I didn't have. You have the ability to now take that talent and passion and drive to do whatever you want with it. That's fucking cool. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely, it's exciting. 
and yeah. it also it's it sounds exhausting totally to me at the same time um it's sort of one of those like i just i don't know where to start i don't know where to begin um and i've sort of i've you know been looking on online just to like read about people's side hustles and sort of how you know what what they're doing to generate extra income and i'm trying to figure out how i can sort of take maybe little pieces of one thing or multiple things and sort of turn it into a new career or something i didn't even know even existed or maybe even create a new uh a new path that never even existed before um it's i i live in a i live in an area where I live right next to a town that's full. It's the richest neighborhood in New York. Oh, fun. <laughs> and so one of my, one of my Google searches that I still have an open tab, it's how to take advantage of rich people. <laughs> and I don't mean it in that way. I just, I, I, I'm wondering like, what are services that the Uber rich pay for? that I don't even know exist mm -hmm. that I could sort of slip my way in there and maybe, you know, create even something like, I don't know, videos of dog birthday parties or something. I'm sure someone who lives in an $8 million house will pay 10 grand to shoot a dog's birthday party. Yeah. Um, or and I love dogs <laughs> and I don't own a dog because my apartment, you know, I can't, I can't have dogs here. So I'll, I'll just hang out with other people's dogs. Um, I'm, and then on the flip side of that, I could just be a dog walker but that you know i want to sort of take my passion and sort of roll it into you know and you something. know what's great what you said is the most relatable thing on earth because it is both the most exciting and terrifying position in the world to have endless possibilities in front of you and then having to like morph that open space of everything into income it is yeah. it, it takes a lot of hard work to be able to create a business and income that's not ascribed from like a company that's got 50,000 employees. Right? right. So that's not easy. And there are pragmatic reasons why you will either be incredibly successful or a huge failure. And guess what? It doesn't matter. One way is going to be great. One way is also going to be great. Just, you know, with a little bit lead longer lead time on, on the happiness quotient. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. But it's true. It's, it's, it's very hard. It's not easy, but you have endless possibilities to sort of build out whatever that looks like for you, which is both fucking awesome and horrifying. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I have a, a handful of months to try and figure that out as long as I can get myself moving. I had, yeah. I had, listen, for me, I'm excited for you because I had the same two months severance. I had the same, mm -hmm. like I had two months to figure my life out. And to be fair, it took way longer than that. Like way, way longer. I lived right. off of my savings for a very long time, which is terrifying and scary and stressful and a million things. But like, I'm finally at the point where it worked. It's making sense. I am now reaping those rewards that took two years to build to this point. But you have, awesome. that, you have that runway right now where you can now start building that for yourself. And it might take only two months. It might take two years. It might take 20 years. You don't know. Yeah. But until you start working it, it's really, really, really scary and, and also amazing. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, I have, I have a bunch of ideas, things that, you know, I want to try and, you know, get going. Um, things that I have no, I don't want to say I have no business dabbling in but like think i just like i yeah, want to start that. like a i want to start like a clothing brand do it but this is coming from a person who has like five versions of the same outfit from old navy that they wear <laughs> like i don't know anything about clothing so what um, learn yeah dude i, I mean, literally that, didn't know anything about anything right but i'm doing it yeah. i still don't know shit but i learn Exactly. You just got to be like very mindful about the fact that like if there's not something I don't know how to do, I'm going to learn how to do it. And if I can't teach myself, I'm going to ask someone else, right? For like sure. that's where the people aspect of life comes in. You can rely on the people and places and things in your life to help you get to the point where you want to be. So just do right. it. You could do it. Yeah. I mean and th and that's sort of that's the plan. You know, I'm having a little a little bit of trouble getting going, but I feel like once I 
especially like with that specifically, like I come from a, like a marketing background. Mm-hmm. I've worked on a marketing team forever. And so it's like, okay, I have this idea. I know like what I want to do. It's the business side of it that I sure. don't understand. But once I can figure that out, like I know how to market this stuff. I know how to like get it in front of people's eyes, whether it's actually good or not, whether people actually want it, that will be up for debate. That's up for the market to decide. Mm -hmm. But it's really like my biggest hurdle is like the business stuff. And that's like YouTube university. Yeah. I'm telling you, man, literally everything I've learned in my life, I've mostly learned for free Mm -hmm. minus fucking college. But I've I've gone to YouTube University. I've learned so much, so much, dude. You want to start a clothing line? Start a clothing line. Yeah. You want to do dog videos for rich people? Do dog videos for rich people. You're in a position right now where you're paralyzed by the unknown, which is an incredibly relatable thing to be because you've lived a life for a decade of comfort and sustain, you know, stability that has never had you questioning anything. So right. now you have endless time, endless possibilities, and that is, in in a weird way, paralyzing, right? It's very easy for you to be like, oh, shit, I don't know, right? I don't know how to yeah. start a business. I don't know how to sign up an LLC. I don't know, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, okay, Google.com, boom. Right, and I have all the time in the world. Now, all of so, it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, dude, listen, I, I know it's like a very weird time in life because I literally was sitting in your seat two years ago, but I like I hope I've said it a hundred times you literally can do whatever the fuck you want. And just knowing the skill set that you have as a creator, as a director, as a person who cares about making things in a creative way, you're going to be successful. You just have to like build out the tool set that you need to do that. And like, I I believe you'll do it. I have no reason to doubt any of that whatsoever. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, no worries, man. I like to spend the last bit of every podcast doing like a easy Q and a, you already asked the, uh, answered the, <laughs> are we out here alone? Is there something after, but what, what's your favorite movie? Uh, I'm going to get some shit for this. You've got mail. There's just the something. shock on my face is not conducive for an audio <laughs> podcast, but wow. I listen. I love the movie. I love all rom-coms, but go for it. That was Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan in their prime. And it, it it's such, it's honestly, it's, it's kind of hard to watch now because it's very much a period piece. Mm-hmm. Um, that was 95, probably six, yeah. 97, 96, 97. Um, and it's like, it's almost laughable at how dated all the technology <laughs> has become. Yeah. But the, the story, I just love the story. I just, it's sort of watching that movie is just like wrapping yourself in a warm blanket on a cold night. And that's actually, that's usually when I, I usually watch it about once a year. Uh, like every like November ish, once it starts to get cool, uh, just feels good. Dude, I, I do the same with When Harry Met Sally, which is a decade earlier than that movie. Yeah. But as a single person, I think it is very informative about like the relationships between men and women. And I just think it's like one of those timeless films where it's like if you if you put it on at the right time, there are lessons that you'll learn in some of these movies repeatedly, no matter when it is. And Mm -hmm. that's like sort of how I find life. Like things hit you when it's supposed to. And for sure, you've got mail is so fucking good. Ah, Meg Ryan, common denominator. (laughs) What's uh, what's your favorite food? Pizza. I could eat pizza every single day. Never get tired of it. Um, One day, I I think I calculated or sorry, not one day, one year. I calculated um, how much pizza I ate for that whole year. And it was something like 600 slices. I forgot the exact number. It was like 680. That doesn't sound like enough. Uh, That's two. You know, I mean, it, like, I guess two slices a day. That's a lot of pizza, but. Yeah, if you do the math, um, I don't think a doctor would be too happy <laughs> with the results of that. Um, that's why I don't go to doctors, so I don't get <laughs> yelled at. Yeah, I hear that. Um, took me a little bit to navigate the whole health insurance thing because, you know, no employer. But yeah, good yeah. times. My last question is, give me uh, the best piece of advice someone's ever given you. Oh, God. I thought you said these were easy questions. I said some were easy, some were hard. (laughs) You sure your question isn't, did the Irish do (laughs) 9-11? I think they did. Whatever you say, I'll just mirror that. (laughs) Um. Oh man, 
I think. Okay, I got it. Uh, I'm a big fan of Casey Neistat. Me too. And he created this whole campaign for Samsung called Do What You Can't, mm-hmm. uh, which is the title and it's, it's self-explanatory. Um, and it sort of it ties into a lot of what we've just been talking about is just, you know, there are things that you don't think that you're able to really accomplish. They're out of your out of your, uh, your field of expertise and you just, just do it, just chip away at it until you can actually accomplish what it is you want to accomplish. You might fail. Um, but whether you fail or succeed, you're still doing it. Um, you're, you're attempting it. Um, and I think that's just, it's something really important to, to me. Um, I don't necessarily, it's one of those things where it's like, I don't always necessarily take that advice. Yeah. I, I, I give up on things fairly easily. <laughs> um, just cause I always, I always look for the, the path of, of least resistance to sort of accomplish what it is I want to accomplish. And if it ends up just being too hard, I'm like, you know what? I, there's a billion other things I could do. I don't have to do this. Um, but it, it's, it's definitely, it's important, for, you know, for things that you really want to do. Um, even if it seems like it's out of reach, just, just try, just, just go for it. Yeah. You know, I love and, that. I think is perfect tie in for the conversation that we had. And I yeah. think for you specifically, if you look at your ability to understand that, that shortcoming of yours to like, well, if something's hard, I'm not going to do it. That is 65% of the battle of finishing things. Like Uh knowing that you have that inherent hurdle is going to allow you to defeat it, right? If you were completely (laughs) oblivious to the fact that you have that hurdle, you'd have a lot more problems. But the fact that you're like cognizant of it, that's a huge step up in the right direction. I think that's like a beautiful sentiment. And it's probably one of the reasons why I love Casey as well. It's just a very thought, thoughtful way to live a life of intention. I think that's like all we can really ask and... Yeah. Mark, dude, I'm uh, I'm incredibly appreciative uh, for you coming on today. I, I really, really enjoyed our chat. We're gonna have to do it again in like six months or so. See where uh, see where the dog video journey has led you, and, <laughs> and, and all the cool shit that you're doing. But um, I've got a cheesy line. If you've been on my podcast, you're part of my family. So welcome, man. And I'm uh, I'm incredibly thankful that you took the time out to come on today. Thank you. Thanks so much for inviting me. I had a great time. Oh no problem, man. Take care. See you.